Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for AskLeo.com. I'll be brutally honest, this video isn't really for you, it's for me. I'm actually testing a couple of different changes that I've made to my uh, video setup. But I came up with an excuse to turn on the camera and record a short little video for you so that if my experiments uh, actually turn out, then um, you'll see this. Otherwise, well, I guess nobody will ever see this and it doesn't really matter. So if you've tried to log in to askleo.com at any point in the last few months and you've gotten your password incorrect, what's happened is that the page has simply refreshed. There's been no error message, no indication of exactly what's wrong or why. As it turns out, well, that's annoying, but it's not unheard of. I've heard of sites doing that before. In my case, it's not what I wanted to ask Leo to do, however, so I started to investigate it this morning, finally. And what it turned out to be, it was a lot of um, uh, diagnosing, reverse engineering is the term that I used with the, uh, the support engineer for the software that I was, uh, that I use, uh, WooCommerce. I ended up reversing their plugin and another plugin and basically looking at the code and trying to understand exactly what's supposed to happen when you fail a login and where the error messages actually would come from. A very long story short, there's a setting in my security plugin that actually disables error messages on failed logins. Now, and I've since turned that off. I've, I, so error messages are now enabled on login so that if you've got a bad password, it'll tell you you've got a bad password. If you don't have an account, it's going to tell you you don't have an account, those kinds of things. So a lot more feedback about why a login might be failing rather than just silence. But you might be wondering, why would any website not want to display an error message on a login failure? As it turns out, most websites don't. It's only websites that have logins for large numbers of users, like askleo.com does, where you really want to be able to provide a little bit more information about why a login could be failing. The problem is that every website in the universe is under what I'll call a slow but persistent brute force attack. Hackers are trying to log in with anything that they can come up with that might be a login for that site so that they can then break in, maybe hack into an administrative account, uh, hijack the site, deface the site, use the site to send spam, any number, of, any number of different things. So one of the security techniques is to remove as much feedback as possible from a failed login. So when a hacker tries one of these brute force attacks, the only feedback they're giving is it didn't work. So rather than saying, hey, you've got a bad password, keep trying the password, but the user account is okay. Or you've got a bad user account, keep trying different user accounts until you get one that is something we recognize, and then we can start working on the password. There are other types of information that can get fed back that way as well. In the case of, most websites, there's really only one, two, maybe a half a dozen people at most that need to log in, usually for administrative purposes. I have something like 20 different websites that I administer one way or another, and those are all configured to silently fail your login if you don't have the password or username correct. Like I said, that then gives the hackers who are consistent and persistent about trying to hack into your account or into your site as little information as possible as to why it's not working for them. So like I said, it's a simple checkbox that I forgot to uncheck as we migrated all of the user accounts from the old members.askleo.com site onto the primary askleo.com site. So if you've been having trouble logging in, uh, hopefully you'll get a little bit more information about exactly what's going wrong and that'll help you uh, fix the login, get a new password or do whatever it takes to, uh, to get yourself logged in. Now, as to what I'm experimenting with today, you may remember that, I don't know, a couple months ago, I think I did a, uh, another behind the scenes, how the sausage is made kind of a video about 
my videoing experience, what it is I do here when I record my uh, direct-to-camera videos, which right now are mostly the video narrations, the uh, just the camera turned on while I'm recording the podcast audio. And I got feedback from a really good friend of mine, uh, David Lawrence, who is an actor down in, uh, actually in Burbank, uh, who does, uh, he's got a couple of awesome classes if you want to do, uh, learn to do voiceover work, those kinds of things. Uh, he's got a, a great app called Rehearsal. If you're on an iPhone and you're, you are yourself an actor and you want to run your lines, go grab a copy of Rehearsal and make sure that, uh, that you're using that to practice and memorize your, uh, your scripts. Anyway, he sent me a couple of really good pieces of feedback about the lighting in this room. And so I ended up changing a couple of things. Uh, I won't have pictures of them now because basically they blow out any pictures that I would take. But instead of those big um, lights that I had pointed up at the ceiling, the first thing I did was to point them at me. Second thing I did was to replace them with uh, LED lights, uh, smaller LED lights. Now, that may sound inconsequential, but one of the problems is that I'm in a fairly small room. And when you've got those lights turned on for any length of time, it gets really really warm in here, really toasty. So turning these into what are normally battery driven, but in fact, we've got a, a converter on there now, uh, battery driven lights that uh, are just a, a, a rectangle of LED lights uh, that hopefully are giving me enough light, that's part of this test, for this video to actually look halfway decent. Uh, it's gonna be much, much cooler in here and I'll be much more comfortable and therefore hopefully a little bit more likely to uh, to do some of these videos and not have to uh, you know, turn up the air conditioning or do something silly like that when it's time to record videos. The other thing I've done, and you've probably noticed this already, is that my background is different. What I've, pl I've played with green screens in the past. I've actually, the, the orientation of this room has changed a time or two. But I've played with green screens in the past and I've, I've always kind of enjoyed having something interesting behind me. Um, I know that I've gotten one complaint about the bookshelves that used to be behind me and the stuff that was on them. It was too distracting apparently. But uh, with a green screen, which is what I have now, in fact, uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to be using as a background, but I will turn that off for a few seconds. And here you can see what the green screen actually looks like. It's actually a piece of green cloth that's hanging um, on the, the, the mounts for the, the bookshelves that were, used to be behind me. So uh, playing with green screen is basically what another part of this specific test is all about. Trying to understand whether or not uh, this actually is going to look good enough for me to carry forward and continue to do. Um, as I've said many times before, a lot of what I do in Ask Leo is experimenting, it's playing, it's part of what keeps things interesting and new to me. It's part of what keeps me engaged in what I do. So trying to play around with lighting, trying to play around with the videography, just trying to play around with everything that I'm playing around with right now, you can tell there's a common theme. I'm playing around. And like I said, it's part of part of why I end up doing Ask Leo, part of why you can see the various different videos and audios and web posts and all those kinds of things that are related to uh, what comes out of askleo.com. Anyway, that's kind of the summary of what's going on here right now. Um, assuming this works, thank you for watching. <laughs> thank you for sticking through. It's another chapter in how my sausage gets made. Hopefully it's not too ugly. Hopefully it's, it's actually kind of interesting. And I will uh, see you once again uh, sometime soon with one of my video narrations or one of the other uh, occasional videos that I put out. Take care, everyone. Goodbye.